Okay, so we're ready to move on to the radio section of this radio, uh, finally. And uh, what I'm going to start with is this bandpass filter that you see right here. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to build this radio for 20 meters. Uh, so there's a little table up here that uh, shows the various values. Uh, so basically involves uh, winding a pair of transformers here. And uh, they are on uh, T37.6 and at uh, 20 meters... Uh, that is uh, four turns to 21, so that's pretty easy to put together. And what I'll do is I'll put all this together, together with the uh, caps and the variable caps. And then uh, what I might do is hook it up to my uh, spectrum analyzer. Uh, and uh, let's just have a look at the effectiveness of the bandpass filter and confirm its operation before moving on. Now, one of the other things I mentioned before is I, I won't be installing this... Uh, Mars 6 preamplifier in the circuit initially, so I'll just be uh, kind of shorting this out. But anyway, let's have a look on the uh, board where the uh, bandpass filter goes. Okay, so uh, just going through uh, what's changed on the board. So I did get this uh, encoder installed and I checked that out and it does work. Uh, here's the uh, connector for the uh, LCD, so that uh, is installed and it works. Um, and the bandpass filter, uh, so first we have this uh, PCB, B and C jack right here. And then the bandpass filter goes, here's the input transformer. Here's the output transformer right here. The two variable caps go here and here. And then there's a few other caps we have to, uh, we have to put on right here. Um, so then once I've got that installed, I'll be able to sort of pick off uh, right here, which is the output of the... Um, the output of the, the second transformer and uh, run it through the spectrum analyzer and confirm the operation. Uh, just a note, here's where that MAR6 goes. So I'll be bridging between here and here to, uh, uh, to take it out of circuit. Uh, at least initially, I might put it back in circuit later on. And then we move on, here's, the, here's where the splitter goes and, and that goes off to the FST3253 and so on. So what I'll do is I'll get that uh, bandpass filter installed and then we'll come back and do some testing. As you can see, I've got the uh, bandpass filter installed and I'm injecting a signal right here from the tracking generator of the spectrum analyzer and then tapping off here and that's going off to the uh, RF input in the spectrum analyzer. So let's just pan up and we should uh, see that nice trace there. Uh, so that's, as you can see, centered around about uh, uh, 14 point uh, two, 25-ish megahertz either side. So there's uh, 250 kilohertz either side uh, of that uh, of that midpoint of the bandpass filter. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, just to show the effect of, uh, of those variable capacitors. Uh, so this is the capacitor on the left. And you can see uh, it's a little bit better. And then the, this is the variable capacitor on the right-hand side. Oh, bear with me. I'm having trouble getting the... There we go. So you can see I've got it pretty much... Uh, pretty much where we want it to. And there's about a 2 dB insertion loss of the bandpass filter. But anyway, that's looking pretty good. We can move on now. Let me just pan back down to the, the radio. So we can move on now to the uh, final section. So, sorry about that, focus. Um, so the first thing to get installed is the splitter right here, and that's uh, um, a uh, tri-filler round uh, wound T50, um, FT50 um, uh, toroid. And then we've got uh, the FST 3253, which goes right here. And then uh, we've got the uh, uh, Talo detector capacitors right here and resistors and then finally we've got the op amp right here and uh, obviously there's a pile of little vias that I have to get uh, that I have to get installed um, and after we do that the radio should be uh, good to test so what I'll do is I'll get this uh, splitter installed I'll just confirm that um, I'm getting the appropriate uh, 0 and 180 degrees on that and then we'll move on complete the radio Okay, so just a quick update. I have the um, uh, tri-filler wound toroid, uh, which acts as a splitter in circuit now. Uh, I'm probing off the two outputs here and here, and I'm injecting a 14.2 megahertz signal from my uh, signal generator. 
Uh, one of the interesting things, I did have a comment uh, on one of the previous videos uh, from a viewer who said, you know, what is exactly the advantage of this double balance setup as opposed to the single-ended setup? I think it's a great question. I, I think I might do some tests later on to see if it's really worth the hassle of putting this uh, splitter and circuit. Uh, the the single-ended one, uh, this actually goes into pins 7 and 9 on the FST3253. Uh, the single-ended one just ties together pins 7 and 9 from the output. It's an interesting question. Uh, I, I definitely might want to do some testing later on to see if there's any advantages in this, because obviously it's uh, it's a bit of a pain to wind this, uh, uh, to wind this uh, tri-filler. Anyway, so uh, injecting the signal, tapping the output. Let's have a look at the output. And as you can see there, there's that beautiful uh, phase and antiphase signal coming right through there. Uh, so that confirms that the uh, splitter is installed correctly. So anyway, I'll move on now to the uh, final part of the build, which is getting the FST3253 itself installed the resistors here and then the op amp and then we should be uh, good to get this thing on the air okay so that's all the uh, SMD components on um, now I've got to move on to uh, soldering all these little fears here there and everywhere so I'll get right on with that and come back okay well that's all the uh, vias done I have to say that is the most painful part of the process because uh, as you can see let me just zoom in a little bit they are quite close together and there's always the chance of bridging uh, bridging the contacts. So anyway, I've uh, got all the vias installed. I've confirmed uh, uh, connectivity from the various from here to there and everywhere. Um, so I think we're ready to uh, try uh, injecting a signal into this and see if we can get any output. Okay, that's coming right up. Okay, so uh, the board is up and running. I did have a little problem with the ground on the audio jack to not being soldered correctly, but uh, everything uh, appeared to be in order. Uh, I did have to update the uh, uh, radio to I know that I, I'll, I'll, I'll include a link to that, uh, but this is running the latest radio to I know. Uh, now just, uh, let's just change this to lower sideband. So I'm on lower sideband, uh, 14.201, and I'm injecting a signal into here from my signal generator, 14.2 uh, megahertz, and I'm sending the output, the audio output, to my oscilloscope so we can see that. So let's just pan up to the signal generator for a quick moment. There's the signal generator, 14.2 megahertz, running at uh, minus 60 dBm. And if we have a look at the uh, oscilloscope, We've got a nice, uh, wait for it to focus there, a nice uh, one kilohertz tone coming out there. I, I will get this on audio later on, but uh, uh, if I change now to upper sideband, you can see that uh, the uh, software is doing a great job of uh, suppressing the unwanted sideband. So let me move um, the frequency down a little. So let me go down, and there we go. Now we're on upper sideband, so the LO, let me just pan down to the LO so you can see that. So the LO is now on 14.199 uh, megahertz. Same uh, signal on the input there, and you can see we're getting that nice strong uh, signal at around about uh, a kilohertz audio output. Anyway, let's get this on the uh, speaker so you can hear it, and uh, that's coming right up. Okay, so I'm sending the output now. Let me just pan down a little bit so you can see that. So I'm sending the output now to the speakers. And uh, so I've got the same input signal, 14.2 megahertz at minus 60 dBm. And so we're on upper sideband. So let's uh, tune down. Going the wrong way. There's a nice strong signal coming through the speakers there. Getting a few little nasty clicks in there. Right, so now I've changed to lower sideband and you can just about uh, barely hear the signal. So again, that, uh, um, uh, that unwanted sideband suppression is doing its job there. Let's change to the opposite sideband again. There we go.
Okay, so just to give an approximation of what that uh, uh, unwanted sideband suppression here is. So uh, basically, and the, the, the kind of units doesn't matter, the, the difference is what, what matters. So this is receiving the wanted sideband. So you can see it's around about 19.3 dBm. And then if I change sidebands, it goes down to minus 17 dBm. So the difference between that's about minus 36 dBm uh, between the uh, wanted and unwanted sidebands. So, uh, which is uh, pretty good, I think. Um, would have been uh, good to uh, be below minus 40 dBm, but uh, minus 37 dBm isn't too bad at all. And one of the things that I had on the previous radio, which I kind of forgot to put on this is, I had a little IQ balance uh, encoder on the previous one where I was able to adjust the, uh, the IQ uh, balance, um, uh, but unfortunately I left it off this. So uh, I know that did improve the situation uh, last time around. So anyway, uh, the only thing left to do is to uh, get this on the air and see if we can hear some activity. I believe uh, 14 meters should be, uh, sorry, 20 meters, 14 meters, uh, 20 meters should be active at this time. So let's go upstairs and uh, see if we can hear anything. Okay, so I forgot, uh, I actually do have an antenna down in the uh, garage at the moment. So uh, there's a net going on on 14287. So uh, the uh, the net... Of check -ins for the almost 20 meter net. So there's the uh, net operator, very strong signal. Um, you can occasionally hear uh, some of the uh, some of the net callers. Anyway, let me tune around a bit, see if we can find any other uh, strong signals. Now, there, here's the difference. The 811s at the time were sold for 30 bucks. Well, anyway, that's uh, some 14, uh, uh, 14 megahertz, 20 meters uh, in the sort of early afternoon. Um, so anyway, uh, radio appears to be working, uh, working reasonably well. Uh, like I said uh, in the earlier part of the build, I haven't got the, um, the preamp in there, uh, and I'll probably uh, install that in there and see how that uh, changes uh, reception. But anyway, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed this uh, series of videos. Um, all the materials will be uh, in the link below. That's all for now. Thanks. Bye-bye.